they have the little the wow. cone. Oh. They have the cone that they stick in your ear, and then you light the cone, the paper cone, on fire, and uh. the heat is supposed to draw everything out. Like this is that same kind of. How the hell did you think that worked? Kind of treatment. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, 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 it could just be like it's uh, a little bit of heat to something to that's sore, kind of kind of makes it feel temporarily better. You know, that's, I mean, that's why eventually they, that's why they came out with the idea of bleeding people because it actually short term produced good results you know, because. You drain a bunch of blood out of somebody, he feels kind of lightheaded and kind of high. Yeah, you're kind of hypoxic. Is that the right word? Uh, I don't know. No, it's I'll, the right I'll accept word, that but... one, and that's good enough for me. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, and so people go, yeah, wow, I feel kind of high. Yeah, you know. Your so, blood pressure's drop. Yeah, exactly. You're just out of it. And so they started thinking, hey, let's drain blood out of them. That'll make them better. And so, yeah, I, I, it's hard to say how many people died from getting bled like mm-hmm. that. I mean, there's, there's a theory out there that George Washington was killed by his doctor. <laughs> because, yeah, he was sick, and the doctor just kept taking blood and taking blood and taking blood. I have no idea how much he had left in him by the time he passed. But Yeah. Yeah, sad. Well, but anyway, heat, we're, we're, heat is good for certain things. But, but heat is, is good, but it's a temporary kind of fix, I think. Well, I mean, yeah, you, maybe. like, heat up to relax the muscles to treat them. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, yeah. right, it's not like, oh, put some heat on it, and then magically you're cured. Like, oh, if yeah. your muscles are messed up, mm. they're going to be messed up unless you do something to yeah. them. But this open flame treatment, this moxie, what is it? Moxibustion. It's moxibustion, which is, you know, combustion basically it's going to leave a burn on the skin so it's almost as if it's well, doing more damage than it you doesn't know, in the have to well, I, I think done right it, it doesn't it's just kind of like a heating pad you know if you use yeah. a heating pad right it's great and if you crank it up too high and, and then fall asleep on top of it You're well burn you might just get a second degree burn or something yeah. i don't know yeah. it's, it's an open flame so i always figure that's a bad idea but, but it's an open we're flame. on a sidetrack that uh, yeah yeah doesn't matter we're totally on a sidetrack yeah Later on, the coroner said that Sigmund, back to our story, didn't appear starved. Apparently, he had been eating normally and drinking normally. He wasn't dehydrated or anything like that. So if somebody had had him chained up in the basement for five days, then at least he was being fed. There also was no immediate conclusion about the cause of death. Apparently, they had to think about it for a few months, and uh, they finally decided that it was a heart attack that killed him. As for the cause of the burns, well, uh, that's unknown. Uh, Sigmund's whereabouts for five days is unknown. How we wound up in that coal pile, unknown. And the mysterious green ointment. Well, you know, nobody knows what that was either. They were sure it was Jelly. ointment. It wasn't like a weird miscolored pus or something. Uh, they Sorry, were that's a gross They question. seemed to feel like it was some sort of some sort of Like greeny. a solve. It wasn't greenish in the sort of pus sense. It was more like an ointment, kind of clearish, but with a tint mm. with a tint to it, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, hopefully, right. hopefully a doctor can tell the difference between ointment and pus. I would hope that. Well, <laughs> I mean, I guess pus probably isn't their ord, but you know, like when you get a blister and it fills up with that like clear uh, liquid or whatever. Stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. You That's know, because if he had had a burn, it could have mm-hmm. blistered, and it yeah. could have been the remnants of like the clear goo. Yeah, I, but I, I, I don't. Yeah. It wouldn't have been green. Probably. No, green, green would be a yeah. sign of a larger issue, and that would have been apparent, I would presume. Well, yeah. larger. Like, like I mean, he abduction. was dead. So yeah, he was. Dead. There was a sign of a larger issue already. I Say, is there a larger issue? Oh, yes, there is actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have an infection, but, interesting. but it's too late. Okay, yeah, All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So we have theories. There, uh, people have uh, got a lot of theories about this one. Uh, first, the first theory. This is uh, a big favorite out there, which is UFO. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Sigmund was abducted by a UFO. He died of fright from his experience, uh, and they dropped his body on the coal pile and hightailed it out of there. And, yeah, so the evidence for this is it did not appear that Sigmund had climbed the coal pile. And also... Uh, that, wait, can, uh, yeah, when, do you, when do you want to talk about that coal pile? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I, I have huge issues with the nobody climbed the coal pile. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I've, I've wondered about that one, too, to be honest. Okay, finish this but, part, uh, then we'll, we'll go back. We'll, 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 talk back. About, we'll talk about the evidence for this. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Also, uh, his last name was Adamski, and it turns out there's a very famous ufologist, or is that ufologist? I can't remember. Ufologist. Ufologist named George Adamski. I think he was, I don't know if he was dead by that time or not. He died in 1965, so he was was pretty dead. dead. Yeah, uh, and so, according to the papers, at least, that can't be a coincidence. So, the abduction (laughs) in this theory could possibly have been a case of mistaken identity. And mistaken time. Yeah, stupid (laughs) alien. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They looked in the phone book, look at him, there he is. Yeah. Uh, and the aliens would account for the strange burns, too. It might be one of them in the spaceship was playing with a phased plasma rifle in the 40-watt range and maybe had a gun accident. Uh, 
and the yeah, and the only one on the burns, of course, was unidentifiable because it was alien in origin. Um, well, it could have been it, the neck rib, right? It could have been like a, a holding device uh, that overheated and yeah, it could have been something like that too. Cost some burn. I don't know. But I, I'm just loving the idea of the aliens. Like, oh crap! Oh crap! We killed them! What are oh, we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get rid of the body! We get rid of the body. Where are we gonna dump it? Well, it's, 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 it's a coal miner. Okay, there's a pile of coal over there. Quick, let's get out of here. That looks uh, like a soft place for him. Yeah, <laughs> drop him. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, of course, another reason the OM might not have been identified is the coroner didn't try too hard to. Again, I don't know how much testing they did of that. It could have. It just really doesn't they, sound like they tried very hard. No, at it all. could have been they just sort of smelled it and said, "Ha, huh, doesn't smell like anything I know of," and that's about it. Well, uh, and remember, this is 1980, so it's not as if they can just stick it in the mass spectrometer or whatever it is. It is a mass spectrometer. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's called. Okay, I was <laughs> guessing that the name, but it's not like they can just take a sample and pop it in there and figure out what it's based components is and just like CSI go boop, boop, boop. oh it's used in this and that and this and that we know what it is well, 1980 it's yeah, like exactly. uh, all I know is it's this it looks well, like this yeah typically you know when it comes to testing for this or testing for that it's like you have to actually be looking for it mm -hmm. so you know you can't just pop it in there and then it just says oh it's this you know you test to see if it's this 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 or this and if it doesn't fall into one of those things well okay what well, we can do some more testing or we can just say hey we don't care yeah. I mean, yeah, finding it's, white it's, on burns is not exactly, you know, a, a big deal. It's not a huge thing. Yeah. But you were talking about, about the, the whole no marks coal on the coal pile. Yeah, thing. so th this is the biggest load of hooey I've ever heard of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me more. Joe, yeah. tell me this. Where was this coal pile located again? It was uh, located uh, next to the train tracks and next to the train station. Okay, and what do trains do when they're moving? The trains do, they go Okay, those things are correct, but they also, they cause a lot of vibrations oh, yeah. in their starting and stopping processes. Uh -huh. And if you've ever seen a pile of anything that's about the size of these coal nuggets, mm -hmm. or something that makes a lot of vibration, those piles move. So it yeah. could very easily have been one and two trains came in and out of the station, and that was enough to yeah, to soften been, uh, the indentations that were done by somebody's feet. Yeah, or a little a little rainfall, perhaps. You know, well, and, and, and think about it: the, the paramedics come running up, so they've already disturbed the scene. So yeah. the fact that there's no indentations. I was gonna which say. Isn't whole water. I yeah. just th yeah, I think you know they probably said to the paramedics like, which one of like are those yours? And they said. Probably. Yeah, but the thing about it is, too, is that if you're standing at the base of your paramedic and the body is like, say, you know, 180 ten degrees, up. Yeah, or, yeah, 10 feet up and it's like 90 degrees around the pile, you don't go up here and then over the body, you go around to the base below the body and go straight up. Right. So it might have been that they traced right over the track. Exactly. So, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm thinking that that much activity in that area probably softened the indentations and then yeah. you got these guys who first responders job is to get to the body and help the individual they can't be completely uh, you know they can't do oh oh we've got to take this secure this right they no yeah maybe not i don't know of course i i you know i don't i don't know if they climbed up there they might have been thought, you know that just looks dangerous so we'll just throw rocks at, <laughs> we'll just throw rocks at the body until it slides down to us okay I, uh, yeah i don't I'm, think that happened either probably not they probably okay. did climb especially up if you think they turned them over yeah they did turn they would them have over. had to have actually touched climbed them. up yeah, yeah i think so but uh, and also Ella, and uh, as far as the UFO theory goes, you remember Alan Godfrey, the policeman who was involved uh -huh. in, the, in the Todd Morton UFO incident? Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, he was, as I said, also on the scene for this crime, uh, and he, he's familiar with this case. He was interviewed, actually, years later about this, and he, is, he said it was, quote, a load of rubbish, referring to the UFO huh. theory. Well, there you go. Yeah, so even though Godfrey himself you know, totally believes he encountered a UFO, he, he, he's not, not buying into it in this particular case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this, this is not, there's another theory out there that I found on Reddit, of all places, which is that he had a stroke. And uh, he had a stroke while he was shopping for groceries and just sort of wandered off in a daze. And then some good Samaritans took him in and took care of him, hoping that he'd come to his senses and that they could get him back to wherever he belonged. But then when he croaked after five days, they decided to get rid of the body. 
because apparently even though they were good Samaritans, they weren't quite actually that good. <laughs> and they wanted to avoid contact with the police. So, anyway, what do you guys think of that theory? Well, he could have wandered away from the Good Samaritan home on his own and <laughs> sure they croaked did. on yeah. the... I mean, you know, he could have saw the coal and thought, oh, I know that. Why do I know that? Mm, I'm going to climb up there and yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Something familiar. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I thought strokes tended to leave some pretty obvious sign. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And uh, I, I'm sure since they were a little iffy in the cause of death, I'm sure they looked at his brain in the yeah. autopsy and apparently I, there, there was no evidence of a stroke that showed up in the autopsy. Huh. Oh, yeah. well not that well, The other thing I hate about this theory is that, is that, I mean seriously, you're going to find some guy who's wandering around in the days, you, you're not going to call the police or something? Or take, him, take, or take him to a, or and take then him even, to a hospital or something. And or then gonna, even after that, when the police are like doing this investigation, you're uh, not going to go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah no no. That was the all. guy. Yeah. yeah, I helped him out, but he wandered off. I didn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so okay, not the best Reddit theory I've ever come across, but uh, you know, you know me, I, I find all the theories and plunk them in there, good or bad. Yes, yep. you do. Not a good one. What we do? Uh, and uh, there's a kind of similar theory, which was lightning. No. Uh, yeah, I know. Similar thing. He was struck by lightning, became disoriented, and his shirt caught fire, so he took it off. His watch melted, or at least got really hot, so he took it off too. That's uh, for his wallet. I don't know what happened to that. So his, uh, his watch was hot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was hot at some point, yeah. Uh, and then he wandered around for five days because of the lightning, you know, mixing up his brains. And then uh, when he finally saw that coal pile, he was like, yeah, something familiar. So he, you know, climbed the pile because it's coal. I love coal. You know, and, uh, and he did have heart issues, actually. So if he did climb the pile, it's conceivable the exertion, you know, caused him to have a heart attack. Nothing well, else about this theory makes any sense. I was going to say, because, you know, if, if a stroke leaves a whole lot of evidence, getting struck by lightning you would think. is going to leave way more evidence on your body. Mm, yeah, you would think. Especially if we're saying his watch melted. Well, like, not on his wrist it didn't, right? No, or yeah, like, it didn't leave any marks on his wrist. And, no. it, you know, if his shirt caught on fire, surely his jacket would have been singed at least. Yeah, at the very least. You know? The, yeah, his it, hair would have been all singed, too. Bad theory. Yeah. Yeah, so another another terrible theory, the lightning one. Uh, it's another theory. He left to start a new life, but he uh, got distracted by a coal pile and died on top of it. <laughs> he just loved coal so much. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he did. And so I can't believe it. Well, it could have been. He's leaving to start a new life. He's saying goodbye not just to his wife and his family, but also to coal. And, you know, he had to go reminisce with the coal pile just a little bit longer before he left. And, had a heart attack and died. Hmm. I we move on. I like this theory. That's it for this episode. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, suicide? No, I'm not buying that one. No, no, there's, you guys, there's, no. there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, another possibility is Sigmund had a girlfriend. Supposing he wasn't as into the wedding and the whole family scene as everybody thought, maybe. And this is conceivable. I mean, there are people out there who lead double lives. So, so maybe he just thought, and, and there was a little bit of tension in the family over the wedding, frankly, yep. I, had, I had heard. And so maybe he just said, you know, screw this, screw these people. I'm just going to go to my girlfriend's and just hang out there for several days, you know, and, and blow the whole thing off. And then at some point, well, you know, he was going to go home, but then he has this heart attack and dies. And then whoever he was staying with just says, ooh, uh, this is going to be put the clothes on, dump it. This might explain the shirt being gone because I'm thinking that dressing somebody in their vest and their jacket is not, is, is probably not that easy if they're dead either, but I mean, the shirt would be comparatively harder, I would think. Mm -hmm. So, Or maybe the, maybe the shirt had lipstick on it or some other kind of DNA evidence. So The, the hard part about this, well, by the way, I don't remember seeing this anywhere else, but I was thinking about, like, you know, people who have a thing on the side, usually... They don't want to mix their two lives because it's an outlet and an escape. And by doing what you've, you've theorized he would have done, I'm saying, screw it, I'm just going to hang out here the whole time and those people can just blow off. Uh -huh. Well, that lets the, the genie out of the bottle. Everybody now knows that you're screwing around and suddenly you don't get that, that best of both worlds that people who do this are after. Well, that, that is the I whole mean, it thing. it flies in the face of why he would have, a, you know, a girl on the side. Well, exactly. That, that is the problem is that if he had a girl on the side, he would have been more discreet about it. He wouldn't have yeah. gone over to her place for five days. Well, yeah. here's something I will bring up, which yeah. isn't, is not a nice truth to be facing, but uh -huh. there are people in this world who, when faced with um, 
the serious illness of a spouse, yeah. pr particularly one that's potentially getting progressively worse and worse, oh, yeah. just run away instead of staying around to take more and more care of that person. So mm -hmm. it's possible that he'd had this girlfriend and you know she was fulfilling the needs that his wife wasn't anymore because she wasn't able to anymore and was just realizing, oh my God, I can't take care of my wife anymore. And that's why he ran off and he was intending to run off forever. Mm. It's possible. Yeah, it's, it's not possible, likely, but it's more possible than, I mean, it, it helps explain why he might have gone, you know, just yeah. been okay with exposing, quote unquote, the double life that he was just ready to leave. But mm. again, I don't, I don't think it's a good theory. No, no it's, uh, there's no, not really much of anything in the way of evidence for mm -hmm. it. I mean, it, you know, it does account for a few things like the body being, you know, being a, apparently sort of looks like the body might have been dressed by somebody else after death, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it would kind of account for that. It doesn't explain where the body turned up on top of the cold. Oh no, not at all. That's not the discreet, that's not the, the way I would choose to dump a body. Yeah. Uh, because they were talking about like in a locked coal yard on, and dragging it up to the top of a coal pile right next to some train tracks at mm -hmm. a train station. It's well, and not discreet, I know, guess, I mean. and the other thing for me, when we talk about all of these theories that had, don't have him going to the coal pile on his own, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm, I'm willing to say, like, it would have been really easy for one set of tracks to disappear, but the set of, you know, some person dragging a body up a coal thing seems a little more like that would have been more obvious, it but does, maybe not. It, it, it does seem to me like most likely he got up there on his under his own power because why the hell would anybody else drag somebody's dead body up to the top see of the I, I I still question that they okay let's just run down this 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 alley I don't actually think that if he was already dead when he got to the coal yard that they necessarily had to drag him in because what was the guy who um, was running the, the coal yard Trevor Parker okay Trevor Parker's job may have been to shut and lock the gates. But Trevor Parker may not have been good at fulfilling all of his duties, and so he shut the gate. He did not, however, lock it, and therefore somebody could be like, oh yeah, that guy always shuts the gate, but he doesn't lock it. You drive your car in. It's much faster to drive your car in and drag the body into a spot. Now, maybe they're hoping that more coal comes and the body gets buried. I don't know, but... You know, I, don't, I can't imagine that in a yard of any size that you would want to be dragging the body that Wasn't distance. it 10 yeah. feet up the coal, the coal pile, though? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. It was not at so the bottom. So what's, your, what's well, the I, I don't, there? I don't, I don't I, have an answer to that, but I... Because that's the I dragging... I doubt that somebody was, you know, doing the, the fireman carry or the, the old uh, the Agatha Christie mystery where they, they drag them and the, the heels are making lines in the dirt. But like, that's the dragging... I'm not talking... I don't care about the dragging through the yard. I'm worried, wondering about the 10 feet up of coal pile is the dragging that I feel like. That girlfriend that would be was a bodybuilder I mean, maybe. who was a national shot put champion uh -huh. and she threw him. Or okay. maybe his girlfriend was actually his boyfriend. I mean, maybe he who was a national shot put champion. Could have been. Yeah. yeah. Could have yeah, been. I'm just saying or that it seems like if you're dragging a body 10 feet up, there's going to be some significant, even with trains and all that stuff, yeah. it seems like there there it, would be some marks. Yeah, there would, there would be significant marks and there, there is that risk of being seen and everything. I, I do think the idea about coming in, you know, the, supposing the gates were locked, but supposing that it was one of the delivery guys because coal was uh, delivered to the yard, supposing and supposing if Trevor or whoever is out delivering things and the gates are locked, then maybe the delivery drivers had keys. I thought. You know, or, you know, and so, you know, it might have been somebody who actually had a key to the but lock. But there was no deliveries. Yeah, I thought there, there were no were deliveries. No deliveries. But, no, but, but I'm saying that if the guy... The delivery person the delivery had person a set of keys. Has a set of keys, and he knows. An accomplice. Okay. He, and, and he had no. Yeah. He, so even though that wasn't his day to deliver, but he still had access to the yard, and you know, and so it could have been. That could have been still to me. It still does not make sense as a place to dump a body. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that that so we kind of got a little off track there. With well, it, yeah, we're just fleshing theory, some stuff out there. But there he was, you know, the girlfriend. He died, and you know, I, eh. yeah, I know. So, um, uh, yeah, not certain. Not, this is not a great theory. Okay, let's move to the next one. Uh, there is another theory out there in the webs, which is an accident. Thought is that he was on the coal pile, and unbeknownst to him, the coal started combusting. It does happen if you have coal. It sometimes will, will will combust deep within a pile, and you can't even tell. There's no open flames or anything like that. 
But deep down there, it's burning and putting out poisonous gases like carbon monoxide, etc. And, and when these, when the coal fires like this happen, they, they, they burn for a long time, and then eventually, if they do reach the surface, then suddenly, boosh, they, they ignite, they ignite into, into flames. a big old fire. But yeah, coal can act, that can actually happen with coal. Uh, and so maybe Sigmund, for whatever reason, was on the pile and inhaled carbon monoxide.